Hello everyone, in this video I will talk about taking into account the movement of BTC in the movements of other coins. So I think many have noticed that with the growth of uh, BTC many altcoins fall. In BTC pairs this is due to the fact that for example if uh, Bitcoin grows by a hundred dollars and the altco altcoin doesn't then the altcoin in this pair is gonna fall. And also vice versa, if the Bitcoin drops then the price of altcoins may slightly increase. But of course there are other situations as well. Uh, consider the dollar pair. Uh, for example there is no direct relationship. But here you can also see that with the growth of uh, Bitcoin other heavy coins like um, Litecoin, Ripple, Ethereum and others continue to grow kind of in, let's say, synergy with the BTC. So let me elaborate it to you on the chart. You can see that the BTC sinks, uh, which and it stopped dropping at around 11 and 50 p.m. while the XRP started growing at the same exact time. Usually heavy, heavy coins, let's say the most popular top 10 fully copy the movements of Bitcoin, only with different volatility. Here we are also not considering the situations where the coin goes flat. In the case of a flat Bitcoin, the ripple can both grow and fall. I'm talking about joint movements. During the rise and fall in 90% of altcoins, these coins behave the same way. When you see the beginning of a rebound on the Bitcoin pair, the same kind of happens to the other coins, but not so noticeable. If for example BTC fell by 5% and XRP by 10%, then the rebound will be more powerful, so it makes sense to open an order for XRP. If BTC rebounds by 1%, then XRP can grow by 2%, due to which we can take our profit. Then, as I said, there are also coins that fall during the growth of BTC and grow during its fall. For example, until recently there was the one coin. When BTC grew by 2-3%, uh, the one coin fell. When BTC fell, that coin grew. Well, you can see this and find similar coins in trading view. If Bitcoin falls, it does not mean 100% that you need to buy this coin. In the case of a powerful BTC drop, such a coin can also fall first, but only then start a powerful growth. Also, uh, we need to keep in mind that at the moment, the one coin began moving the same way as BTC, as in it grows when BTC grows. Then there are situations when Bitcoin falls and then rebounds while the coin which was, let's say, cop copying it, just stopped and didn't move in any direction. So we end up buying it hoping for a rebound. Well, I recommend closing the deal with a minimum profit in such cases. And if Bitcoin starts to fall, then the coin might fall too, thus losing profit. And it's a shame that it did not rebound, but it happens. Such is the market. Well, the moral of the story is that try to always evaluate your risks and close the deal like at the first hint that the situation might go bad. In this case I didn't close the deal because the order book was very thin, as in when I entered 2% or a thousand dollar order book, and if I had closed the deal I would have lost 2%, so I decided to wait. I hope the principle is clear, as in BTC dictates the movement of a lot of coins, so let's consider the situation when the BTC is in the flat, because I believe that when the Bitcoin is flat, the movements of the, of the other coins are left unbothered, thus more precise. This is why I keep an eye on a second pair. I keep the open chart of a pair of, uh, for example, dollar to Litecoin and a pair of Bitcoin to Litecoin.
And in situations, for example, when Litecoin begins to grow for whatever reason, I'm keeping an eye on its growth on the chart of the second pair. If I see that the order book in one pair is empty, I would think that the Litecoin's price will easily increase by 10%. But at this time, I can see that in the BTC pair, there's some wall of several million in volume. Accordingly, if I open the deal, then when setting up a sales price, I will think well where to place my sell order, since there's a wall here. Similarly, if, if the said wall would be eaten away on the dollar pair, then a rise should happen. If you delve deeper into all this, then you need to take into account the order books not only on the BTC and dollar pair but on other exchanges as well. For example, when trading BTC to USD, I use Mid BitMEX. Uh, this allows you to see more clearly which way the Bitcoin is headed. Accordingly, if we see growth and a rebound in one pair, then in, other, in order to understand the pivot point between the growth and rebound, it is necessary to follow the second pair. If I see that there are purchases on one pair and there are no purchases on the other, only sales, then it is very likely that this rebound is false and it will quickly end up being flushed. If there are purchases in both pairs, then this would mean a green light for me. Even a, a free version user has the ability to open a chart for a second pair and monitor it. If not to trade on it. So accordingly, the movements of these coins will become much clearer. And I recommend, I repeat, at the time of learning this method to start with a minimum order trade and pay more attention to the order books, since only with Moonbot you can see both the order books and the charts at the same time. So that's it for today. Thank you all for watching and see you next time.